Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to make a super simple cloak. I used it for my man in costume from the Throne of Glass book series, but there are plenty of other characters that you could use this cloak for or adapt it to suit your specific needs. It's super simple. You don't even have to sew if you don't want to, which is great. You barely even have to cut fabric, which is also great because cutting out patterns is like, yeah, such a pain. So this is super easy, and if you wanna know how to make it, stay tuned. First, you need to figure out what you want your cloak to look like. If you have a character reference photo, great, use that. Since this is a book character, the guidelines were a little more vague. All I knew was that it was supposed to be red. I used this Assassin's Creed cape from a store-bought costume to sort of come up with an idea of how it should hang. And then I looked at a lot of reference photos of different cloaks from history. My fabric of choice is a red linen because I knew that linen was gonna have the weight and the hang that I wanted and I find it really easy to work with. Like I said, this is a no-sew cloak. So any raw edges that are fraying, we are going to tuck in and hide and then we're gonna use the finished edges as the edges of the cloak. I knew I wanted this to be a one-shouldered cape because that was the look that I liked the most. Also, the character is um, a swordsman, so she needs the capability to use her right hand unhindered. And, you know, we all know what happens when you get your cape caught in things. No capes! So, I did a lot of what you're seeing here. Cute. I laid the fabric on my mannequin, moved it around, and figured out exactly how I wanted the front to hang and the back to hang, and kind of how I wanted it to move. Sewing pins and sewing clips are going to be your friend. Essentially, I took the cut edge of the fabric and laid it across the shoulder and rolled it until it gave me that kind of cowl neck effect and until I got the front to look how I wanted. Here's where I figured out that I wanted the cape edge to go underneath the shoulder guard. I liked the way it looked. It gave the look of a more coherent costume, like the whole outfit was designed all together instead of piecemeal. As you can see, I did a lot of manipulating of the fabric and a lot of thinking. But I did all the thinking, so you don't have to. Okay, let's examine some cloak anatomy while Sam of Christmas Past continues to fuss with it because she doesn't realize she has the answer yet. One edge of the cloak is going to go under the shoulder guard and actually over the shoulder, under the guard, and connect to a strip of fabric in the back. And then it's going to wrap around the neck in a cow-like fashion and connect to that same strip of fabric that went under the shoulder guard in the back. Does that make sense? Okay. Here's where I did some sewing, but you don't have to. I liked this corner to be shaped the way that it is with the pins, and so I threw a few stitches in with red thread to do that. It was super easy. You can't even see it because it's red, so it doesn't have to be a special stitch of any kind. This also made it easier to glue the strip of fabric that I'm using to attach the two corners of the cloak together. This is my super accurate measurement method for figuring out how long the strip of fabric needs to be. Don't be like me, guys. Just use a ruler. Okay, now we're going to make the strip that's going to connect the cloak in the back. I got this super cool but stupid expensive fabric from Joann's, and it looks like dragon scales, so... 
obviously. I had to get it. I only bought a yard of it, though, because <laughs> it's expensive. I cut a rectangle three inches wide by seven inches long. I pretty much eyeballed this from the mannequin. You can measure it if you want, but like I said, I was in a hurry. Now we're going to take that strip and fold it sort of like a letter and kind of crease the fabric to help it stay. And then we're going to hot glue it. Now we're going to hot glue it to the cloak to bridge the gap between those two pieces of fabric and connect the cloak. So I actually reinforced this with some thread, just a couple stitches. You don't have to do this, however, I really hate when costumes come apart when I'm in the middle of something. I was taking this into the woods to shoot it and so I really didn't want it to come apart and have to deal with it while I was out in the woods. You don't have to do this step, but if you want to sort of strengthen the bond between the dragon scales and the cloak then I recommend it. Now, this step is optional and depends on how much fabric you got. Like I said, I got three and a half yards, I believe. I didn't want it to be quite that long and I wanted the bottom edge to be rounded, so I cut it down to 70 inches in length. I'm 5'10", so 70 inches would be the top of my head to my feet and I wanted it to drag the ground a little bit. So I thought from my shoulder to dragging the ground just a little bit, 70 inches would be perfect. So I essentially just laid it out, measured the length I wanted, and then cut a rounded bottom. Of course, don't forget to try it on. If it makes you feel like riding a dragon, ruling the galaxy, or destroying your foes, you definitely did it right. That's it! Super easy. I was really pleased with how this looked in the snow and how it flowed when I walked. As always, if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe and tune in next time. I think I started last year's videos with a cloak, too. I guess that's tradition now. Turtle? Right now? Buttons on the other side. I've had this camera for like a decade. Okay. <laughs>